Everyone read the word force. 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 How much force will it take for the ball to hit the bell? This is a kindergarten class, just three months into the school year, and it's their first science unit, a thematic in unit that the teachers have designed around the next generation science standards of force and motion. Read it to me. How, How much force, force will it take for the ball to hit the bell? The whole class starts with a morning message, and the morning message sets the tone for what is it we're going to be learning about today. And that's also where kids get reminded of language they know before. We're going to be learning about force. It's foreshadowing what's coming, but it's also reminding them of that vocabulary and getting them excited about what is going to be happening in the day. Juan Carlos, what do you know? This classroom is a majority of English learners. It's an English-taught classroom. Um, but there are also some native English speakers in the class. So the teacher had to really think through how to set it up so that her English learners were getting the support they needed to be able to participate in the content, participate in the class, and the support they were going to need about learning English. So what you're going to be seeing in this classroom today is some time where she's working just with her small group of English learners who are at the kind of lower intermediate levels, and then you'll see those students also in the context of the whole class lesson. The car moved because I pushed it, and it rolled away. The ball moved because I kicked it, now what can I play? Cause and effect, cause and effect, things move when you push or pull. Cause and effect, cause and effect, things move when you push or pull. In the designated ELD group, the teacher is really focusing in on language, language practice, understanding language, pointing out language. So it's a protected space, a protected time. So we're looking for these three words. If, if then, 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 and because. Okay. And we're going to look in this song. If you see one of those words, raise your hand. Do you already see it? OK, come show me what you know. If. If. Everybody say if. If. Kevin, what do you know? Um, two if. Two ifs, okay. I'm just going to do that one. What do you know, Betsy? Betsy. Yay! Then. Everybody say then. then. How do you spell then? T-H-E-N. So this is her chance to really drill how English works and to give them some practice with language. We're going to play a little game. Yay where we are going to talk about the language for boys and girls. Remember we made this poster talking about boys and girls? Let's see if you can remember. So when we're talking about a girl, we're going to use the word what? She, she or her, her or hers. And when we talk about boys, we use these words. He, he she, him, him, and his. Let's try to remember those words when we play our game with the ball. So I'm going to roll the ball. And some of us played this a little bit on Friday. So you might remember there's a little song that goes with it. Do you remember the little song? OK. So how about if I start with you? And you're going to roll the ball to somebody. It's very helpful to make it a game. It's fun for the kids. So language is developing in the context of something they're doing, something very tangible, very hands-on. And they have a good time doing. Anderson's going to roll the ball to one of us. <clears throat> he rolled the ball to him. Now roll the ball. He rolled the ball to him. I rolled the ball to her. He rolled the ball to her. And she rolled the ball to him. Nice job. In addition to the work of pronouns and rolling the ball and looking at the chant, she also took this opportunity to give them some of the vocabulary that's going to be used in the whole group session she's doing later. This is a red car. Red car. Red car. Red car. Red car. Blue car. Blue car. Blue car. Road. 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 Blah. 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 All right, here's a new one. This is a very heavy piece of metal. It's called really called a nut, but we're going to use it today as a weight. Say weight. Weight. We're going to use it to make the car heavier. And this, do you know what this is? A regla. A 
Yes, that's right. We can trace it, the numbers on the paper. Yes, you can use it for tracing and you can use it for measuring. Uh, Abby, you said the word in Spanish. What's it called in Spanish? Regla. Regla? Regla. Ah, okay. In English, it's called a ruler. 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 So this is pretty easy. I'm just going to push something and then I'm going to say the something moved because I pushed it. And I'm using that word because again. Oh, look, I already have it written out. The something moved because I pushed it. I think I'll push the road. And then I'm going to go do this. The road moved because I pushed it. Now you can say the road moved because did you push it though? Yeah. Should we say the road moved because her pushed it or the road moved because she pushed it? She. She. It really took a lot of support and a lot of teacher prompting to help them with that language. But they were able to then, by the end of the lesson, really produce it. It really requires practice. It requires a level of teacher prompting. It requires a safer, smaller setting for English learners often to get into language in the way they need to. That's the real importance of that small group work. Okay, boys and girls, we are going to try our experiments. We have been trying to, let's see, how can we get the red car to go farther than the blue car? Read it with me. How can we get... In this whole class session, she's continuing a process she'd started clearly the day before which is of a set of experiments testing out, if we do this, then the car will go further. We've had lots of things work and some things that don't work. Is that okay? Yes. Yep, that's okay. Let's see what's worked. First one, many people had the ideas to push the red car faster. Did it work? Yes. Yep, in fact, we made a sentence about that. Let's see. If we push the red car harder, then, the red car will go farther. Oh, I hear you. The next one was, if we tilt the ramp of the red car, then the red car will go farther. That graphic organizer is a really important scaffold for English learners in particular, because it's so visual how you're putting together your cause and effect thinking. We haven't tried this one. Put something heavy in the blue car. So I have these little metal things called weights. Say weights. Weights. Now our idea was that if we put something heavy in the blue car, that the red car will go farther. So I'm going to put the weights in. And I want you to think for a minute. Which one will go farther? Will the red one go farther or the blue car? Turn to your partner and start by saying, I think the red car will go farther, or I think the blue car will go farther, and then say why. Okay, now The English learners in the class had already learned that word wait. They had already reviewed the words about the ramp at the blocks and everything, so they were ready to go. So they had the language, they were able to talk with their partners about it, and now they're ready to see what's going to happen. So this is that tangible, hands-on, wonderful thing about a force in motion unit done well. Here we go. The same, same way. Same. All right. Did we just learn something? Yeah. That's the really cool thing about being scientists. Most of the things scientists try, they don't work. So here's your chance to think. I know. What I other? Say, what other ideas do we have to make the red car go farther? Yeah. Think for a minute. I see Charlene is thinking. I see Allison's really thinking. Raise your hand if you want to share an idea of how we can make the red car go farther. Stephen, what's your idea? Mine was, mine was if we put something in the front of the blue car and the red one nothing in the front. So put something in front of the road? Okay. So I want you to think for a minute. If I put these here, Will the red car go farther if we put something in front of the blue car? Think for a minute. And when you talk to your partner, you'll say, I think something. 
Okay, turn to your partner. The Think Pair Share is a great strategy to use because it gives everyone in the class an opportunity to try out their thoughts, try out the language of expressing their thoughts in a very safe, small um, context rather than having to raise their hand and saying it in front of their whole class. For an English learner, that's essential because it's always scary. It's always a huge risk to speak in a language you don't really know well. You ready to find out? Yeah. I'm so excited. I hope it works. Mm -hmm. All right, first I'm going to do the red card. We just learn if we what if we put something then the red car will go farther good let me draw that all right this really builds the academic and scientific mindset which is we are about uncovering and discovering and knowledge. And we try things and we learn from them and we draw conclusions from what we've done. And the important thing is the inquiring mind, the analytical task of putting that together. Let's try our fancy sentences now. We practice these a little bit. The first one is the cool sentence. It goes like this. If I something, then something. Let me try the first one. If I push the red car, then it will go farther. The teacher did a wonderful thing of offering them three sentences for their final concluding sentences. And they could choose to do a cool sentence, a super sentence, or a fancy sentence. And what that does is it gives kids choice about how much risk they want to take about language, where they want to enter into the complexity of language. And then they got to practice it in front of the group. Kevin. Which one do you want to try? Orange one. Okay. Ready? If, if I, I push the red car harder, then the red car will go fa farther than the blue car. Yes. Nice job. The Common Core layers language in and across everything you're learning. Language becomes the vehicle through which you learn. Language becomes something that you are learning, and it becomes the vehicle through which you express your learning. Stand up. Let's practice our song. The lesson concluded by letting the kids stand up, get out those wiggles from having sat and done such hard academic and language work, and burst into song with their their song about cause and effect, which now has much deeper meaning to them. Cause and effect, cause and effect, things move when we push or pull. Cause and effect, cause and effect, things move when we push or pull. The SEAL mission is to see to it the children are developing high-level, rigorous cognitive skills, analytic skills, academic skills, and developing that language that goes with it that will give them not just success in academic realms, but the voice and the language they need really in life. Cause and effect, cause and effect, things move when we push or pull. Nice job.